talking to Linda Macarena of the Moving Sushi blog. Not only does she write a blog, but she is an eco-warrior and everything to do about saving the oceans, that is what Linda does. So I have a few questions for you, just for the people who don't know who you are mm -hmm. and don't know what you do. Could you give us a brief intro into what it is that you do? Well, my name is Linda Macarena and I am the other half of Moving Sushi, um, which is myself and my husband and we do um, a lot of writing and science and exploration activities specifically focused around the ocean and ocean conservation and generally the environment and how we as humans interact with it. And can you tell us how it all started? Um, it started in 2008 and we drove from Cape Town to Japan and back again over two years. So we basically lived in the car and we went around um, West Africa, East Africa, Europe, we crossed Russia, we went through China, India, um, Vietnam, all the fun stuff like Arabian Peninsula back down side looking for people uh, working in ocean conservation issues. So we chat to them and learn from them, it could have been NGOs, anybody that was doing something um, positive in the ocean environment and trying to make a difference in their communities. So we would just meet with them and work with them. Can I ask why? Is it a passion or why? why? I think what both of us, special? you know, we kind of, we've both been, um, I think like exploration and adventure is kind of something that's in our DNA before we even met and 11 years later we still, you know, are being able to be very passionate about what we do when it comes to explorative stuff and when it comes to the environment, I think we just both naturally gravitated towards it. I mean, Mike's a fisheries scientist, so if he's not in the water, he's not a comfortable human being, he has to be in the sea. <laughs> I'm convinced he's half fish. And I just, um, I grew up with a, you know, a family background that was on a farm and very involved in the environment. So it kind of was a natural thing for both of us to want to do. And we just weaved that into our work. And you've been together ever since. And we've been together for a long time. <laughs> and we're going to be together for a long time. So, no. That is awesome that you haven't killed each other yet. Not yet, you've no. in the same field working together. We have a great prenup. Oh, <laughs> that's the secret. That's the secret, I'm telling you. And now a little bit of an off the wall question. Yes. What is your favorite place in the world? My favorite place is Gabon. Um, have you experienced um, any fear along the way? And how did uh, you oh overcome God. it? I've experienced so much fear. <laughs> no, I think a lot of the biggest fear um, is kind of trusting your internal barometer to work. So the fear is always, am I doing this right? Is this the right thing? Am I going to you know, be okay? Am I putting people in danger? And then overcoming that by trusting the person that you're with. <laughs> Who or what is it that inspires you? kind of inspiration but a very very long time ago when um, we were living in Gabon and we ended up running into Kingsley Holgate because he was doing his around the Africa trip and he came past and stayed with us for a little while and we you know I mean he's the modern day Livingston he's incredible he's an amazing human being and we were having some drinks with him around the fire and we just said you know Kingsley like what does it take to do what you do and he said there's only two things and it's so simple and it's First you have to tell your family and friends because they're the only ones that are ever going to believe you that whatever idea you have is actually merit and it's going to work. Because if we had to say to somebody, oh we're two like 23 year olds and we're going to drive around the world and film conservation, they're like that's nice, we're not giving you money for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then the other one was get off your ass and do it. And he said that's basically how he's run his expeditions and how he channels his work, you know, um, his passion into his work and I think we've kind of taken that on and lived by that ever since and that's kind of you know that's our inspiration for doing challenges can you name three challenges that you guys face and how did you deal with them okay so some of the challenges we've had to overcome obviously is finances and I think one of the challenges for me personally is I'm you would never guess it but I'm naturally an introvert I'm just putting myself out there a little bit more um, forcing myself to kind of be present with is there anybody that you thank for this Oh, my husband. I love him so much. He's such a... No, he's a huge part of what I do. No, I do. He's an amazing human being. Like, he's given me so much with just, you know, the space to be able to understand, like, who I am and what I want to do. You know, he's, a, he's an amazing support base, and he gives me the freedom to be able to express myself with, without having to worry that it's going to embarrass me, other people, you know. He gives me a reason to actually have something to say because. May I ask what's in the past? We like to do like one Africa trip, um, at least two or three a year. But um, the next uh, destination for me is Senegal this year, and then I've got a sneaky one in the pipeline which I haven't quite 
decided on yet, but it, if I do, it's a dream destination for me. So I'm Can gonna. No, no, I don't like to jinx it because I want everything to be in place beforehand because it's not just. I don't like to just travel. I like to have a purpose for when I travel. So um, it, the building blocks have to go into place before that you know becomes something that I want to do. And then moving sushi itself, we're busy actually turning the gears on our next expedition which we've it's gonna be a big one <laughs> but it'll start probably at the end of next year because it takes us about a year to do the prep work I'm also writing my first book itself along and hopefully by the end of this year there will be a physical manuscript and what advice do you have for or words of encouragement for those who want to follow in your footsteps or perhaps do something similar to what you guys are doing I think one of the most important things is um, just being true to who you are. If you want to stalk you on social, yes, we can. Okay, we're on uh, Facebook at Moving Sushi. Um, we are also on Instagram at Moving Sushi One Word, and then Twitter is at Moving Underscore Sushi. And that's pretty much the platforms that we're on. And your website? Our website is www.movingsushi.com. Thank you so much. No problems. Thank you for your time today, Linda. <laughs> and I, I just appreciate your time. And, and just for those who don't know, Linda's been one of those friends who've been just really real. And that's why <laughs> I have got her in my series, because she inspires me to just be a better human oh, being. Oh, you'll make on the blush. <gasps> better human being. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, love to love. Okay, Tom. Bye. Bye.